Hey y'all, Meal Plan and Mama here. It's been a while since I've made a video, several months to be exact, and somehow I've wound up getting a few more new subscribers while I've been on a break. So I thought I would try out this camera to see how this one works on this uh, somewhat new phone that I have. I don't like this one as well as I did my older camera, and I'm still planning on purchasing a different camera to do YouTube videos with, but for now, this one's gonna have to do. Um, I had said in the last video that I have posted that I was going to try to get back on a more regular schedule with making YouTube videos and uploading them to my channel. And the kids and I, had my younger three, had decided that we were going to get really serious about taking our dog to the park, getting her some regular exercise, and us getting out. And we'd been diligently doing that, and then it happened. I um, fell at the park on some broken asphalt while I was running slash jogging and I had what wound up being what the doctor said was a high ankle sprain. So this Friday will be seven weeks. I'm still in a boot. I've started physical therapy. I'm trying to transition to an ankle brace. And so that just threw everything off. And then because we homeschool, this is the end of our school year. So we're trying to wrap up all of our school things. So it's been super busy, super crazy and not being able to get around like I normally do in a house with three levels has been a challenge. So I will be glad when this ordeal is over with. We're looking forward to summer. We're looking forward to having the bulk of our school completed. Well, now because we homeschool, we're never truly done with school because we're there's always a learning opportunity. So we're always doing something um, that can be credited to part of our education. So anyway, that's where I've been. That's how I've been doing. And I'm going to show you a few things around our home here so you can see what we have going on. And I hope this video will find all of you well. I want to say hi. I'm trying to get back and answer some questions. I've had several questions on my YouTube channel about recipes and about just different things. Um, one of those was someone wanted to know if I would post the recipes, the actual ingredients, uh, because they don't do Facebook. I actually have a Facebook page called Meal Plan and Mama where I post a lot of my recipes, but I realize that some of you don't have Facebook. I, I'm trying not to get on Facebook much other than for my Meal Plan and Mama page and for... Um, a lot of our homeschool things because a lot of our activities and events and um, support groups are on Facebook. But I found that that can be a huge time sucker. So I've done away with um, Instagram. I haven't been on Instagram in probably two or three years now. I don't have anything else other than uh, Facebook and this YouTube channel. And I'm not on Facebook much. But I have seen some comments come through on my notifications about people wanting to know if I would post recipes. So I will try to do a better job of getting the actual recipe posted down in the description box. One of those was for the Lazy Day Lasagna video that I have and the ingredients that I used for that. I actually have that in the crock pot today because this morning I had therapy for my ankle and then I had a doctor's appointment and so it's been back and forth, in and out, up and down all day long. So in between those two appointments, I put Lazy Day Lasagna in the crock pot. So I'm going to show you what it looks like and then I'm going to tell you this is super easy there it really isn't even a recipe not really um, so I can just tell it to you and you can recreate this at home if you're interested in, in doing this but I'm going to click my camera over show you what it looks like in the crock pot and then I'll tell you how I did it okay here it is in the crock pot what this is I sprayed my my crock and then in the bottom of the crock pot, I put a bag of frozen cheese ravioli. Then I poured a jar of marinara sauce over that. Then I sprinkled about a cup, maybe a cup and a half of mozzarella cheese over that. And then a sprinkling of Parmesan cheese. Then another bag of frozen cheese ravioli. Another jar of marinara sauce. Another cup and a half of mozzarella cheese and then a sprinkling of Parmesan and then I just covered it and turned it on low 
and it's been going about five hours now and I would say it's almost ready if it's not in another hour it will be ready and then you just serve this now if you want meat in this dish you can actually brown some hamburger meat and add that um, mix it in with your marinara sauce or your spaghetti sauce but that's all there is to lazy day lasagna this is one of my husband's favorites all of my kids like this except for one and he's going to have some leftover filet last night and um, uh, leftover baked potato because yesterday was Mother's Day. Today is Monday. And so uh, that's what we had for supper last night. So he's going to have this. So the rest of us are going to have this Lazy Day lasagna with some French bread and some salad. For those of you that were with me last year when we were getting our pool installed, we have now... Um, installed a partial deck around the pool so hopefully this weekend the kids will be able to get into the pool there's our ladder sitting there that's that we still have left to put in but the pool's ready to go for the summer I still need to pick up a couple more of those little um, Adirondack chairs for the deck but the girls have thoroughly enjoyed playing on the deck around the pool and they're anxious to get in I wanted to share some books with you guys. This is what we have read, uh, what we're reading right now. And I usually do this every now and then, uh, share with you some of the books on our reading list. So right now, my tenth grader is reading *The Count of Monte Cristo*. My fourth grader is reading Helen Keller's The Story of My Life, and we are getting ready. When she finishes this book this summer, we don't live far from Ivy Green which is where Helen Keller lived. And every year in the summertime, they do the play, The Miracle Worker. So the plan is we've already done it before with one of my children, but the girls were really, really young and they don't really remember it. So she, the one that's reading this book, she doesn't remember the play, going to the play or just bits and pieces of it, but she doesn't really remember much of what it was about. So we will go this summer and tour Ivy Green again, and then hopefully get to see The Miracle Worker when she finishes this book. And then if you've been on my channel for any length of time, you know that we're working through the Little House series, and we are actually now on book eight. This set was my set when I was a little girl. So we are on these happy golden years, and there's only one more book in this set, and then we've read a whole bunch of other books that... Um, draw off of this time period as well and we are just thoroughly enjoying going through the little house series so we're reading this one as a read aloud and then i am reading for the children's sake i've actually read several really good books over the last several months my readings kind of slowed down because we've gotten so busy um, but this one i am working through right now so if you've read any of these books i'd love to hear what you think about them in the comments So because of my ankle injury, a lot of my big, huge plans that I have for this spring have kind of been put on hold. So I haven't gotten any of my flowers planted or vegetables planted that I like to do in the spring. Hopefully I'll be able to do that this weekend. It's rained every weekend too, so that's been a big issue as well. But that's my goal is to hopefully be able to get some planting done this weekend. And then, um, of course, we haven't been able to hike or do much exploring because of my ankle. So hopefully I will be in the ankle brace soon and then be able to tra transition out of that so that we can get busy enjoying the springtime and the end of our school year. So I am thankful this did not happen in the middle of summer. And hopefully I will, when summer really gets into the swing of things, that I will be back to my normal self and have... Um, all the mobility and use of my ankle because you really need two good ankles. So I am thankful it wasn't my right arm. That would have been bad too. But anyway, that just reminded me when that whole event happened um, how important it is to have freezer meals prepared and ready to go in your freezer. Of course, you know, life, that's the way life always happens. Whenever I had, the, when I 
ha this happened and I got the injury, I didn't have hardly anything in the freezer. So I was blessed to have some friends that brought a few meals over while um, during my recovery. So that was great. And I'm so thankful for that. But then it really reminded me that I needed to get busy when I felt like it and try to get some more freezer things stashed away. So I haven't had an opportunity to do a really designated, big designated freezer cooking day. Once we're done with the bulk of school, I'll really be able to settle in and spend a lot of time doing some freezer cooking. I did, we did last week make several homemade pizzas and put them in the freezer, and that's coming in handy because we're super busy right now with uh, recitals and therapy appointments for me and just a lot of end of the year stuff. So we're pulling from those um, homemade freezer pizzas and pulling them out on pizza night instead of a DiGiorno or, and there's nothing wrong with those, but instead of that, I have homemade pizzas that all I have to do is just take them out and pop them in the oven. So they work like a frozen pizza you would buy at the grocery store, but the ingredients are a lot better for you because it's all homemade and we know what's in it. So we did do that. And I have some barbecue. I, I made a, a pork butt one night and just pulled the pork. And then we had barbecue sandwiches one night. And then I froze a good portion of that. So I have that in there for quick barbecue sandwiches for lunch or carnitas or something like that if I decide to make that one day. And then I doubled up some spaghetti one night and froze that. And then I have another casserole in there as well. So I, I'm slowly getting that stash um, built back up just when I have time. But like I said, in the next several weeks, I'll be able to really sit down and focus on that a whole lot more. Now, I hope everyone had a great Mother's Day. We had a good Mother's Day. We d I decided to cook for Mother's Day instead of going out to eat because there are 10 of us uh, and it would have taken forever to have gotten a table. We would have had a long wait. And then I have two young grandchildren that I didn't want to have to sit around and wait for hours on a table and then have to sit and wait for food. food. So what we did was I actually purchased a whole beef tenderloin from the grocery store and I sliced it up into fillets and then I grilled those and then did grilled chicken and grilled asparagus and then I did broccoli, cauliflower and carrots and steamed those, made loaded baked potatoes. What else do we do? Yeast rolls. I, I just bought the Sister Schubert yeast rolls. Did those. A great big salad. It's like a copycat Olive Garden salad. Same ingredients in the salad as Olive Garden. Made that. And then I did a gluten-free... Let me see if I can remember. It was a gluten-free, because my mom is gluten-free, so it was a gluten-free brownie, white chocolate, Heath trifle. That's what it was. So it had uh, gluten-free brownies, then a layer of white chocolate pudding, then a layer of True Whip. Then I sprinkled it with Heath, Heath Bar, Heath Brickle. And then I did another repeat layer of that. And everybody loved it. It was requested for an upcoming birthday. And so it was good. I would say it was a hit. Even those that weren't gluten-free liked it. So that was our Mother's Day. It was actually enough to eat off that for lunch and then supper, and then I have a plate of it left over for tonight, and one of my kids that does not like Lazy Day lasagna will have that for supper tonight, so I don't think that was bad for the price. The tenderloin in our area for, I think it was six pounds, was regularly $120 for that beef tenderloin, and I got it on sale for 60 and then after I did it, I thought, eh, should I got another one and froze it because that's a really good price. Or at least it's a good price for our area. So anyway, that's what we did for Mother's Day. The, the cleanup was relatively quick and the cooking wasn't all that bad. And um, so that's what we did. So I hope all of you guys had a wonderful Mother's Day if you're a mom or a grandma um, as well. And that's what's been going on in our neck of the woods. Um, I miss being on YouTube. I hope this video finds everybody well. And if you haven't already, click um, subscribe to my channel and give it a thumbs up if you don't mind. And thank you all for watching.